Quantum of Solace is the attempt to make a sequel to a damn near perfect action movie. And wow. Before I get into it, spoilers. Spoilers, gonna talk about this movie. Spoilers. Now, I remember when this movie was coming out in 2008, I was so excited for it. The three movies that year that were coming out that I always do research on and always look for trailers and stuff when I was a young kid were Iron Man, The Dark Knight, and Kwame Solace. And Kwame Solace was one of the most anticipated movies for me when I was a kid because I loved James Bond and this was gonna be the first Bond movie that I was seeing in theaters. And remember they changed the director and I didn't think that would be much of a problem, but boy was I wrong. I remember walking out of this movie being disappointed. I didn't hate the movie when I saw it, but then rewatching it now, I really don't know what I saw in this movie the first time I saw it. So let's just get into it right now. I will say I like the opening scene. I like the opening action sequence, I like the car chase, I think it's intense, I like the music. The only thing I didn't like about it was the editing was a little choppy, it was a little too quick. And I was thinking, oh, I hope this doesn't happen throughout the whole movie, and <laughs> oh man, we'll get into that soon. Then we get to the interrogation scene with Mr. White. And the scene is fine when you first watch it, but when you re-watch this movie, and you listen to what Mr. White has to say, where he's like telling about this organization that they know nothing about. It's intriguing stuff when you first see it, but then when you realize the movie never really goes into it, you really never learn about quantum, then you get confused and you're like, what are they even talking about? Something you need to know is we have people everywhere. What does that even mean? How do you have people everywhere? Who are you guys? It's something they kind of explain in Spectre. But I feel like it was one of those things where they weren't going to connect it to Spectre, but they just had to because they realized that this movie makes no goddamn sense. Then we get to this chase scene, and oh my god, this chase scene could have been okay in the sense of, like, it knows that it's an action set piece and it could have been exciting. But the way they shot it and the way they edited it is just confusing and gives me a headache. And the editor and the director thought it'd be, like, stylistic to, like, intercut this horse race with the chase scene, and it's, it just looks horrible. It just doesn't look right. You don't even know what the hell's going on, and it's such a step down from the action in Casino Royale that had a lot of wide shots. You could understand what was going on and everything was very practical and there was something there. This just feels like there's nothing really there. They have like a good idea for a set piece but they don't go anywhere interesting with it. And as this movie goes on, you kind of realize that it's just a series of action scenes wheeled together by a stupid plot that makes really no sense and doesn't really progress anything from Casino Royale, except maybe a few things. They quickly explain things to where you don't question how they're gonna get this evidence, like this counterfeit money where they find their next lead, and they go find the next lead, and then Bond, you get introduced to this new girl. She has coronavirus now, prayers up for her, hope she's okay. She's an interesting character. She has an interesting backstory. She wants revenge just like Bond. But the problem with her character is she is in the movie and then she disappears for a while. Like, I don't know why the filmmakers didn't just have her and Bond in the movie together the whole entire time. I don't know why they had her go away. Now, speaking of that, I'll go into that whole part where Bond saves her and just lets her go. She tries to kill him and then he follows her gets the information he needs, he gets the track or whatever, and then he sees she's gonna get killed on this yacht, he risks everything to save her. Maybe he feels guilty for Vesper or maybe all the people he's let die, but Bond is a cold-blooded assassin. Why does he care about this girl that just tried to kill him after he got the intel that he needed? Maybe you could ask her about more intel. But guess what? That doesn't happen. He just leaves her passed out and gives her to like some hotel clerk and then he goes about the next mission. That's the point where it would have made sense if she just stuck with him and it could have been like a kind of like a partner up sort of thing for the rest of the movie. But no, they only do it for like the last third of the movie, which I'll get to later. You also in that whole sequence get introduced to Dominic Green by by far of the four Bond movies that have Daniel Craig in them is the least interesting villain. His motivation is to get land and so that it's cut off water supply so he gets more land. It just doesn't make sense. He's not head of quantum, he's just part of quantum. But I think he has a big part in it. And speaking of quantum, like I said before, they don't really explain what quantum is. They just can like topple governments if they wanted to. They can take out dictators. They can like control water supplies and oil supplies, but they don't really go into it. CIA and MI6 are working with them. Like they just add all these little tropes in the movie that you're supposed just to run with and just go along with because it's a Bond movie. Look at all these action scenes. Oh wait, don't think about that. Oh, there's another action scene. Shh. No, 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 no. Don't think about that. Look, it's Bond on an airplane. I will say the one sequence that's pretty cool is when Bond steals the earpiece and he listens to everyone in the crowd talking and he's like i think you guys need a better place than me and all the people start standing up and he starts taking pictures of him that was pretty cool but then it ends with 
a plot point that gets beaten down throughout the movie that is just not interesting and it's dumb where bond keeps killing witnesses he keeps killing witnesses and mi6 is getting tired of it this is their last straws here when it shows a security camera that apparently bomb shot and threw this guy off the roof and that's bond about it he doesn't try and defend himself when he didn't kill the guy and they have security footage of him getting killed so wouldn't they be able to see that green's men killed him and shot him they have the security footage so why don't they just see that and be like oh bond didn't do this oh and by the way all the people that bond has killed so far have been trying to kill him and he's been close to near death what do you want him to do just stop trying to fight and just get killed himself it doesn't make sense this whole plot point of him getting taken in by mi6 because he's killing too many witnesses it's so dumb because it doesn't make sense i will say though with that plot point in there you get to see judy dench's m more and she's great it was great to see her more in quantum of solace and it's great that skyfall really revolves around her because she's really good as m and it was fun to see her in the movie a lot then bond gets with this one girl who is supposed to take him in she instead fucks him and then they go on a mission together kind of they go to this party the thing is she's not an agent she's like a desk person i get why they sent like a good looking girl to send bond home i get that but why wouldn't they send like an agent? Why would they send like a desk girl? Then why would Bond bring her to this party so that she just get killed too? At this point, everyone knows who Bond is. That made me think you could have just had the other girl in there that wants revenge for the dictator killing all her family. Just have her be the Bond girl the whole entire movie. Then we get the worst action sequence in the whole entire movie, the plane sequence. At this point is where you realize what the biggest issue with this movie is. They're trying to make Bond an action hero. Bond is not an action hero. Yes, he kicks ass. Yes, he drives cars. Yes, he's a killing machine. But that's not the point of James Bond. And that's what Casino Royale got perfectly. He's a complicated character. He's a cold-hearted killer, but he's a complicated character with issues and deep down demons. He's not some guy who's just invincible and just can fly anything and just do all this stuff. Yeah, because apparently he's the greatest pilot ever. Apparently he's Poe Dameron or something. And at that point, it's when it starts becoming unbelievable. And then when they parachute out of the plane, the green screen there looks horrible. That's, I think, the first time in Casino Royale and Quam Solace in these Craig movies they use green screen or CGI. They probably use CGI in other parts that we just couldn't see it. But that part was clearly a green screen and it looks really bad. And that's also a problem with this action. The action's not interesting because it's edited so poorly and choppy and there's not enough wide shots and some of it just becomes unbelievable like the plane sequence where in casino royale it's interesting it was grounded so you really believed it was happening and it was just edited and shot way better so it was way more investing just why i don't know they didn't have martin campbell just to direct the second one i don't know if there was some dispute or something but i just don't get why he didn't direct it too then the final fight it's all right but i don't get why everything is blowing the fuck up is every inch of this place made out of gasoline or like fucking hydrogen or something i mean this place must have set the record for number of explosions every two seconds there's some fucking explosion is there just canisters in the wall oh fuck i guess there are canisters in the wall and wait was bond and this girl gonna kill themselves in the fire he got in there pretty quickly why didn't he just go out the way he came in they're gonna kill themselves what What's going on? And how did Mr. Green get all the way out there when he just took an axe to the foot? God, this movie is just a mess. There's so much going on that doesn't make any sense. Do like how he makes Mr. Green walk through the desert and drink the gasoline. That was good. That was good karma. I like that a lot. And at the end of the movie, Bond finally finds Vesper's boyfriend. He's the reason why she's dead. Figuring out that he kidnaps himself, but not really, to get governments to give money. And he works for Quantum. Don't know what Quantum is. Don't really know much about him, but I do like how he didn't kill him. I thought that was like good character development because you know, he was killing everyone the whole movie. Thought that was fine. And then Bond says he never left MI6 and the movie's over. Whew. To be completely honest, guys, I thought I would maybe enjoy this movie a little bit, but I was very surprised at how bad this movie actually is. The only good thing I'll say about this movie is this movie is carried by Bond, Daniel Craig. Like he's still charming. He's still an interesting character. I do like that Felix is back and the girl he's with is good too. I thought she was a good character, but the movie's biggest issue, like I said before, is they try to make Bond an action hero when he's not an action hero. He kicks ass, but he's a real person. He's an interesting character that they can explore in some very interesting ways. Even the action sequences in this movie don't really work. There's not one action sequence. That I'm like, I want to rewatch that action sequence. There's nothing in there. In Casino Royale, every action sequence is rewatchable and rememberable. I mean, there's nothing even close to the African rundown sequence. And the whole plot makes no sense. There's like so many things you poke holes at, which, you know, a lot of Bond movies, you maybe could do that. But Casino Royale, there really wasn't. In Casino Royale, the plot was way more interesting. It was put together way better. 
Vomisalis doesn't make sense. The plot's not as interesting at all. And you never learn anything, really. Inspector tries to explain it. That's a different review. But still, it's just not interesting. It still doesn't make any sense. They're, you're left with so many questions, not in a good way, but in a bad way. I know I compare this movie to Casino Royale so much, but it's a sequel to that. You would think that they could maybe be on par with that, but it's not even close to Casino Royale. It's not even the same universe as Casino Royale. This is a perfect example of why studios need to let filmmakers take their time when they're making their movies because this was obviously rushed out when casino royale came out in 2006 so like we got to cash out in success of that make a movie quickly have it come out two years later which is way too early for a movie like bond it shows why the studio waited four years to make skyfall and skyfall was amazing Bomba Solace is one of the most disappointing sequels in recent memory i'm gonna give kwama solace a 4.5 it's crazy i really don't think i want to watch the movie ever again like it's Daniel Craig Bond. I always thought I could just watch and have fun. I really had no fun with this movie. There's just some things that are great, like Daniel Craig, and little parts of the movie that are okay. But I get the review Skyfall now, and Skyfall, whew, what a redemption story. So, Kwama Solace. Let me know what you guys thought of Kwama Solace when you first saw it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Click here to see more of David Dave's takes.